I want to start by just considering a few of the issues with a scene such as this. If we don't want to end up getting lost and tangled, there are a few things that I think it's very helpful to have in mind as we draw a panoramic landscape such as this. So I just want to outline some of the points now and then you'll be able to see me put them in action when I draw. The first thing is to have a strong sense of depth, of dividing what's closest, what's in the mid-ground and what's in the distance. And in the mid-ground, there may be several layers closer mid-ground, mid-mid-ground, further mid-ground. I find it helpful to treat each of these planes of depth differently, to think about the pen I use and the marks I use with some degree of separation between the planes because this will help create a sense of distance, which in a panorama is particularly important. We have these very close grasses here where we can actually see the seed heads of some of them. And then we have the far distant mountains and many things in between. So that's the first thing I do. I, I divide my scene into bands and work out how will I draw them. And for this, I'm thinking of this section here as being the closest and this shrub here as being the closest. So I'm looking at using my 0.5 millimeter pen for that. And then I have this middle ground here that I'm thinking of using my 0.3 and I'm going to link in the other side of the river here and also include that in this band of mid ground. Because when I look at how these trees look, they're not so dissimilar to these ones here. But when I go beyond that, to this band, I'm thinking of that as quite a separate place, much, much further away, and I'll be drawing my trees quite differently. I'm going to use my 0.2 for this and to draw these trees with very different marks. And then I think everything above that, I'll use my 0.1 millimeter pen and I'll draw them with an even lighter, different technique. The other thing to bear in mind is how do I distinguish what's happening? It's pretty obvious with color. We have the bands of grass and paddock and even the greens become different greens to help separate the differences. And the green of the trees changes and becomes bluer as they move further back. The river is blue and it's very clearly different to the green on each side, but we're not gonna have any of those color advantages. So the other challenge is to create some sort of sense of separation, certainly with the river, with everything else, so that it doesn't feel like or look like it's another field that's just a bit lower than the ones around it. These are the issues I'll be considering as I draw. Let's start. So I start with my 0.5 millimeter pen, which I'm going to use just for this lowest, closest section of ground and grass, and that part of a tree we can see just in a small way to the left hand side. And you'll notice that the one thing I do try and avoid is drawing a straight or a continuous line anywhere. Because, well, they're not usually good lines for nature. Drawing, drawing scenes, landscapes, it's much better to think of making marks than drawing lines. Occasionally lines are helpful or very short lines, but certainly long continuous lines usually end up creating an unnatural cartoon-like effect, which is fine if we want to create a cartoon effect, but it's not so great if we're going to want something a little more realistic. So I do this closest, darker section first, not because it's important or significant or it needs to be done first really for any reason, except that it establishes the dark values and that's going to be helpful. And it also establishes the marks I'm making for the closest objects to show the most detail. And again, with these grasses, I'm trying to show in some places the grass, in some places the shadows. And you can see me making marks now to establish some of the other areas. So that little row of dots is for that line that joins where all those tree trunks hit the ground. And so having established that, I'm putting these these small trees that we can see the tops of as they go down the hill. And then putting the detail of these fences. Now I'm not going to try and draw the wire in the fence. We can barely see it in the photo. And 
the size of the, the thickness of the, the wire in relation to the thickness of the post is such a small amount that we can't get that scale correct. If I were to draw a wire, it would look as thick as the post. So sometimes it's better just to leave the detail out. That's a bit of thunder that you can hear in the background. So I hope we get to the end of this. So establishing these closest trees that we see a substantial amount of. Now, the one on the end is pretty bare, but I've decided just for ease, and I think for a nicer looking drawing, I'm going to clothe it in leaves. So I'm not going to draw all those bare branches that we see. And so again, I'm trying to draw the effect of the tree. I'm really looking at the, the value, the tonal value of this. I'm trying to imagine if I took all the color out, how gray would these trees look in relation to each other? And how can I represent or achieve something of the effect of those grays with line work, with hatching and cross hatching? And so that tree behind the ones in front is a darker tree. Green is a darker color, so I want to allow for that. And I realize I need to put in the far bank of the river at this point because it attaches to the tree. And I need to put in the near bank as well, which I didn't position quite as well as I would have liked. Should have been just a fraction higher, but I suppose all it does really is make the river look a bit wider. Now, I hadn't worked out particularly how I was going to do the river. I, I did a few experimental marks uh, before I started on a scrap of paper, but I wasn't convinced they were going to be the best way ahead. So trying to establish a clear river bank on the far side where we have some nice shadows from where the water has eroded into the, the soft dirt of the bank is helpful. And now I can position those trees that come right into the river bank. And then I realized at this point that I had actually meant to switch to a 0.3 millimeter pen uh, even before I did those, those trees on the right. So never mind. So I do some horizontal hatching, tr trying to create a fairly thin line. And I add a few lines to represent surface swirling on the river, but not sure yet how convincing they're going to be. Now, I decided to draw some cows. These are one of those double or nothing things. Um, they either look great or we wish we hadn't drawn them. And so I kept, I kept switching down pens. I started with a 0 0.3, switched to a 0 0.2, finished up with a 0 0.1 because there's no way I could draw the legs and whatnot with anything thicker. So for better or worse, there they are. Hopefully the context of a paddock and a fence in front of them will help them look more like cows. And again, now I'm positioning, just trying to get a sense of what's what. And working on these trees in the center. I come back to these over and over again. And in fact, I, I'm still even working on them in almost the last um, pen strokes of the drawing. So it ain't over till it's over. The important thing with these particularly are the silhouettes and how far where the tops of these trees align horizontally with other details that I've already drawn versus the reference. It, it helps me pace my drawing upwards. I mean, I obviously can just slide across vertically, but if I've not drawn something accurately already, then I'm going to have to make adjustments for that in my drawing and try and perhaps spread the difference. So it still is important, even when we can, can just slide how far up or down the paper we're going with details, it is still important to refer back to alignment in our drawing as well. So I've still got my 0 0.3 millimeter pen at this point. I'm just doing this dark, thick tree in the middle and adding a few more details there. And so now I'm, I've switched to 
a lighter pen and I've decided that it's not easy enough to tell that this is water and I need to put more marks in try and create a somewhat grayed effect for the river but I also want the marks to still suggest some movement some swirling in the water but I think that this will be the best way to at least make this surface look like a different substance to to what's above and below it and and hopefully just the context of the scene will make it clear that it's a river if it's not particularly clear any other way but now I've switched to the 0.2 millimeter pen and I'm drawing this band of trees going across pretty much the whole scene and it ends up having some houses at the far left nestled into it. So I'm still drawing individual trees. Now they're large trees and I'm drawing them with a noticeably lighter technique, lighter touch, less detail, far more gestural and suggestive of trees. And really, rather than any individual tree, it's the overall grouping of all the trees, which is the effect I'm going for. But I certainly want to create the sense that they're quite a fair bit distant from those ones just below, that they're quite a lot closer. Because in the drawing, in the photo rather, they are. They are quite some distance further away. So add a few horizontal lines for, for shadow and to just represent the surface of the land. And again, some more shadow there. I, I suddenly realized as I do those marks on the ground that I don't want to put too many marks on the ground because I'm, in a sense, trying to keep the ground fairly bare so that it's in contrast to all the lines on the water. I now switch to a 0.1 millimeter pen. And I'm drawing, again, a whole band of trees but instead of trying to draw individual trees, I'm really taking this as one continuous shape, one continuous surface of trees. I'm not trying to draw individual trees. I'm taking this as all one form because all of the, all of the, the bumps and ditches between individual trees have been minimized so much by the distance that it really is just like a rippled surface. It's almost like a, I was thinking of a like a kitchen sponge that had been cut out and laid down over the top of the the land of the terrain. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to view this as one form, one one textured surface that has sides and does does collect shade. And in a bit more detail to the ones closer because now that I can see what's happening above I can get a sense of my marks further down. In this sort of scene it is good to perhaps go a bit lightly with our marks until we've then taken the next depth of plane um, marks in hand because just as we compare values with values, we also compare lines and marks with lines and marks. And so we get a better sense of how light they need to be or how dark they need to be when there's more variety of the range we want to use on our paper. So now I'm doing the very furthest distance. And again, notice I didn't do a long, heavy, continuous line. It's not because there's not one in a sense, in the drawing, but because it's not really a long continuous line. It's really a surface that rolls away from us or comes towards us in different parts. And again, I'm trying to get a lighter feeling for that than I created for the, the surface of trees on the, on the ridge below that, visually below that. And you see me now putting a lot more lines, a lot more hatching on these centered trees just to darken them up and unify them more into a, uh, a solid band. And there's actually a fence down here I realised that I hadn't done, so that's a nice little detail to get in. And so again, now this is 
big picture stuff. I'm standing up, looking at it, thinking, okay, do the various planes of depth read properly? Uh, closer, middle, further away, further away. Can we tell what they are? And sometimes by giving a, a uniformity to the line work across things that are at the same depth and at the same sort of surface can just make it actually easier for us to distinguish what those marks are for and where they are and what effect they're creating than other ones around them above or below. So a little more detail just with some little seed head dots. I just decided a, a little more value down in this bottom left corner would be helpful. And just again thinking it's a little bit light on the top. So just revisiting these marks now and doing the fine tuning. Thinking, do we have enough being told about the topography of these mountains through these marks without putting so many marks on that they get too dark? If they did get too dark, then we'd have to go darker for the ones beneath. So now we're just putting those last lines on. And I think here is our Northern Rivers Rural Landscape, Northern Rivers, New South Wales, Australia. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Well, what do you think? Can we see the landscape in all the marks? Can we get a sense of depth of distance? What do you think? Well, why don't you have a go drawing this yourself? Of course, you'll find the reference photo on my channel community page. Landscapes are a great subject to do sometimes because they certainly challenge us in our handling of marks and the control and the intention and then developing technique for different objects at different distances. There's a lot of juggling when we do a landscape that, that's as far back to the horizon as this one. So why not give it a go? It's a lot of fun. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.